Hello, everybody. I'm Tego Sachin. Welcome to A Company of Heroes 2. Shackcast between two really exciting players, one named Wei playing as the um, Austair, and one named Alexandru playing as the um, Soviets. And I have a glass of wine next to me, and I am streaming live on twitch.tv slash techclecklu. And uh, you can hang out there with all the people in my chat. Right now there's 21 people <laughs> in my chat. Uh, La Sassion Mask is saying, I bet lend -lease tactics. But everyone predicting um, Alexandru going to go lend -lease tactics. Uh, I think Alexandru is one of the stars of one of my earlier uh, shoutcast things. Uh, I seem to maybe recall uh, the SHK uh, machine guns, or dishk, dishk, dishk machine guns, because I learned in that shoutcast that the Russians pronounce everything. Uh, they, don't, they don't spell out the names, and we have a conscript swim anyways uh, coming out. Uh, for uh, the Soviets and an MG first on this map uh, as the Germans, which I suspect is slightly less popular now that there's no longer a big fuck off house here that's really important. But uh, there is a small fuck off house here uh, with some. Man, these guys have been stockpiling milk or whatever this is. They are just ready. These are doomsday preppers, if you know what I mean. Uh, these guys are ready for that shit. Um, I don't know if I'd face out of that window. Uh, the German player is also like, I don't know if I'd face out of that window. Uh, so, fuck that, I suppose, is the lesson. Let's drink some wine, guys. Good stuff. Tastes like grapes gone rotten. Um, so, MG setup in the middle, overlapping with the uh, Grenadiers, so not getting any capping done. Obviously, in the beginning of the game like this, you want to maximize the... Uh, this guy got to try and hop the fence. Clearly not. Um, you want to maximize the capping you're doing, and so if you ever find your support weapon in a position where it can hang out in the capping radius, you don't want some other infantry squad there doubling up, because it's not like you cap fast or anything like that. Although I have said in the past that I think it'd be kind of an interesting mechanic if you could cap faster with multiple infantry squads. Seems like the sort of thing that, like, it'd be different, it'd be weird, it'd be strange, I want to see, I want to see what that would work like. So, uh, nice job MG34 suppressing these people, although only this guy got the suppression memo, it seems like. He communicated, communicated it to the uh, rest of his friends. Um, Russian player m either stalling for time or doesn't understand how the game works, because at that range you're pretty much never going to win versus uh, Pioneers. I suppose the Pioneers' health was low enough that a couple lucky shots, lucky crits would have killed some people, and then you could potentially win that fight, but typically up close. The Pioneers with their MP40 submachine guns are going to win versus Engineers with their Mosin rifles. Uh, what is Twitch chat saying? I got to fight three times against Alexandru. Whatever happens, he will always go and always lend -lease tactics. And th win thanks to interesting and crappy balance. Well, lend -lease tactics is pretty cool, because it's like being American and also being Russian. It's the best of both worlds. You can, um, you can be capitalist and communist. Nothing wrong with that. Nice conscript scrim going on here. I love, I love conscript. Spam, I can't get enough of that. Um, these Grenadiers doing some work from this building, shooting out at multiple conscript squads at the same time. These guys now in green cover, so uh, they're doing better, but that's only going to last for as long as until these guys get off their butt. But no, their job is to protect the machine gun from the flank. We got some really dynamic infantry fighting going on. Flamethrower's coming in to try and clear out the house. We'll have to see how well that works. Um, Machine gun firing down south here. Those guys just pack it up and leave the field. These are being focus fired insofar as that's possible. Are they going to hop in the building now? Oh, nice. Reinforced from the combat, or er, from the conscript squad to uh, re merge with the combat engineer squad. That's an excellent choice, of course, because they've got the flamethrower and you want to keep that in the field for as long as possible. So that's a nice little tip that's always been in the game. The uh, merged uh, thing has been in there since day one, but sometimes you see it underused, and it's great to see somebody putting that to use to really make some barbecue out of these like, grenadiers. Uh, and uh, these conscripts paying with their lives to buy some time, just really wanting to tie this machine gun down to get in that arc of fire for as long as possible, which means now these guys will be able to get the flank, but it wasn't long enough. The conscripts had to bug out. Another machine gun refaces. Oof! And the catch with the critical, they, the conscripts didn't keep merging, presumably because the engineers got low enough that you would have lost the conscript squad doing it, but you pay for it with the engineer squad. I don't really know. Might have been worth it to lose the conscript squad to keep the engineer squad alive since they had the uh, flamethrower, especially because they were in such a position to start roasting these people down. Um, the Salsian Mask says, uh, going to bed or whatever. We'll check it out on YouTube. Ice Gorilla says, I think it's unfair. They called the basic Soviet infantry conscripts. All the armies use conscription at the time. Uh, well, if we were going to make a list of all the unfair things that Relic did with the Russians in this game, we would never finish. <laughs> Relic is just like straight up 
racist against the Russians in the game. If you ever play the single player, it's just like, oh, let's just let's just let's just make the Russians look like shit. Let's I guess why not? Like wait, nobody nobody likes. Let's just let's just let's just lie about them and make them look horrible. Um, and I guess like a bunch of Russians boycotted the game because some comedian made some video about it or whatever, and then. There was like people freaking out, like, why do the Russians hate a couple of heroes too so much? Well, the answer is because it's fucking like evil. Uh, that's the answer. But I don't give a shit. Uh, I watch much more problematic stuff than fucking uh, fucking couple of heroes too, and I don't care because I can uh, I can put up with bad. Also, because everything sucks. <laughs> it's really what the uh, how it works. Okay, so anyways, uh, we have some nice dynamic infantry combat here. We have replaced the dead uh, flamethrower squad with a brand new, brand spanking new combat engineer squad. I love the little uh, gaskets at the bottom. The little, uh, there's even some like stuff written on the tank. It's a cool little thing. And oh, here's the mortar coming in. Hasn't hasn't hurt anybody. I, I suppose that tiny health bar loss was uh, due to the mortar. Let's drink some more wine. Oh look, Spenny Dubs is now auto-hosting you. Thank you, Spenny Dubs. Does anybody watch Spenny Dubs? No, because my viewer count went down. Uh -huh, so, um, what doth life says? Rear echelons were going to be r r black, but relic pushed out. Um, hmm, interesting. Wonder why they changed that. Uh, I guess maybe they looked ahead in the future and saw how much shit EA Games got for making or Dice got for making uh, those World War One soldiers black in Battlefield One. Because even though that was historically accurate, people freaked the fuck out. They're like, no, black people didn't exist until 1960s. Everybody knows that. Are we going to see a grenadier grenade? Oh, no. I was just, I feel like they're sort of asking for it. Right? They're, they're clumped up. If you can predict a... The thing is, even if you miss with a grenade, like let's say you pop a grenade here or whatever, uh, you pretty much stop the opponent from rushing at you. They have to back away to avoid the grenade. And uh, so that's a win-win. Really nice focus fire. Oof! Really nice focus fire. Uh... Pays for it with a lot of blood, but you catch yourself a squad, you catch yourself a flamethrower squad, totally worth it. We do have Ludley's Tactics, Picked, Dushka, or whatever the fuck it's called, and uh, that's actually going to have a really limited shelf life considering we have the uh, scout car coming out. Now, it does have armor piercing rounds, which will shred right through that scout car, but uh, only if you get the shots on it. And, of course, the scout car can very easily duck, dodge, and dive around things. Uh, Lixon says the army was segregated until later, was it? And what Doth Life said, well, USF could have had respawn black or white. Yeah, well, the army was segregated, but the rear echelon troops were in the back, and that's where the black people were. Um, black people to the back has been the rule in America for quite a while. Um, dum -da -dum. Oh, what the? Life dropping some knowledge bombs in chat. Afraid of backlash from a weak unit being black, but wouldn't have won the Ardennes if not for black troops. Driving recklessly, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Relic didn't want the shitty troops being black people. That would have made an interesting message. But uh, everything's terrible in this game, so that's the lesson there. Uh, machine gun in the middle uh, house is doing some work. That house is obviously, as I mentioned at the very beginning of this cast, no longer as strong as it used to be. And now also that car parked in the middle of nowhere makes a little less sense. Before it used to be parked in front of a house. But now it's just this really fancy car just hanging out. Uh, Lord knows where. I don't know if that's a fancy car. That actually looks like an old-timey car. That's the sort of car that uh, Proust wrote about in uh, Recherche de Temp Perdue. Recherche de Temp Perdue. I don't, I don't know how to speak French, but uh, there was a car in that book. Uh, in those books. There were like six of the books. Or seven of the books, I guess. But they're always, they always like print two of the volumes together. Um, Really good books, by the way. Um, what was I talking about? I don't know. Where's the dish? The dishka has been pushed off. Um, where's the armored car? Took some damage. It's getting repaired. Yeah. These guys sort of like that guy's repairing from like 80 feet away. Special German tactics. They have uh, arc welders that really arc, if you know what I mean. They fucking arc across many feet. Um, uh, so we have a third flamethrower squad from the Soviets. The Soviets really not giving it up. Really, uh, really trying to make flamethrowers work. And I gotta say this match, flamethrowers not working. It's just, just not, it's just not working. Uh, Revlobot, shout out to Revlobot in chat. Keeping, uh, keeping it real. Keeping it real. And look at all this infantry. Oh my god, it just, it's just so beautiful. I just want to kiss every one of these people. Especially this lady, because she's hunched over. She looks like she could use some loving. See, all these people have like really good body posture, really good self-esteem. The guy pushing the dishka doesn't, but I mean that's understandable. He's got to get 
that thing going at a moment's notice, but the fucking women are just hunched over like like hunchback of Notre Dame or whatever the hell. It's just really, it's really sad to see. You want to see some self-respect from the women. This game just says, uh, no, fuck that. So here's what the scout car can do at point blank if you were ever kind of confused about uh, whether it's good against infantry or not. It actually legitimately is when you're that close and you have 100% accuracy and just fire in every, I mean, it's not literally 100% accuracy, but you're just so close and every shot's hitting basically. You can just shred a squad. Like that shredded a six man MG squad right there. That was a grenade, I think, in on the machine gun. Didn't kill a lot of people. That's cool. But that's what this thing can do straight up close. Um, what Duff Life says, the LOL, the medic is like, I'm gonna hide right next to this explosive flame for a tank. I don't think the medics are hiding, is the thing. I think they're just crouched over because they're just like generally sort of subservient kind of people. It's kind of a weird message that Relic is sending. So, with combined fire from a couple dishkas, um, that uh, scout car goes down. Having done its job fairly well, um, it's kind of a stopover, I feel like, for most players until you get to the Panzer II. It's, it's a, kind of a stale meta. Uh, I want to be. I want to be pretty straight with you. you have a pretty stale meta where it's basically uh, you get a scout car and then you get a Panzer II and then you get like a Panzer IV or something or a Panzer. Is seems like the third step is the tough one. Wow, the dish is starting to shred through people. There's two mortars. I didn't think that. Also, you buy like eight mortars. That also seems to be uh, what everybody is doing. Um, talked about that one of my earlier shoutcasts. Hmm, shell doesn't kill anybody. Definitely, these these preppers are gonna be fucking pissed when. Oh no! It hit the last remaining. Uh, shred of a uh, cow's milk or whatever that was uh, that was outside that base or outside that house so that's really that's really sad so sad let's drink some wine uh, to uh, commemorate the uh, loss of the preppers cow's milk because they won't be able to drink the cow's milk all right a lot of wine Ice Gorilla says, fun fact, lit cigarettes generally don't ignite gasoline. Well, the reason for that is that generally lit cigarettes aren't anywhere near gasoline. There might be other reasons too, but uh, let's not get technical. Fresh guard troops are standing by because you just bought a bought the um, half track. So that's kind of deceptive because they're not they're not real guards. They're just the assault guards that come in the uh, half track. Let's look at the map control. Both players have the fuels. Gym player has the right hand fuel. Uh, uh, Soviet player has or the left hand fuel, and so that's pretty uh, straight up uh, even map control. But the German has both uh, munitions, so you know it's plus 48 munitions income versus the plus 31 uh, for the Soviets. And here is a cute, cool little flank coming in. These guys hop out like surprise motherfuckers, and the the, the the look at this retreat! Look at that retreat! What the fuck is going on? What the fuck is wrong with these people? That squad just killed itself out of sheer idiocy. That's literally the worst retreat I've seen in my many years of Company Heroes 2 casting and also a couple years built up of hallucinations on LSD when I wasn't playing Company Heroes 2. That was just sad. That was not even a retreat. They spent like 80% of their time walking in this direction, away from the fucking base. That was just so bad. And these guys aren't getting any medals either. But that was so bad. Jesus. Someone fucking clip that on Twitch or some shit. It'll be on YouTube, so you don't have to do anything. But, um, wow, that was so bad. I just want to send that to Relic, like, on a USB drive covered in pig's blood and be like, what did you do? What did you do to this video game, Relic? And they'd be like, what is going on? We gotta call the cops. We gotta call the cops, A, because they're Canadian, right? <laughs> so they say A all the time. That's what Canadians do. I think the wine's getting to me. Here's a cat. Bye, cat. Um, how the mortar's doing? Seven kills. This one got decrewed, so I suppose we can forgive it for having three kills. This is uh, gonna be a death trap. Gonna be a death trap. I'm just calling it right now. It's already been a bit of a death trap, but now it's definitely a death trap with the uh, health bar. Health bar at about right here. That's um, like three or four mortar hits, really. If you want to be uh, technical about it, and let's uh, let's be fair. We do want to be technical about it. What the hell happened here? What is the fire from? Maybe a flamethrower long ago. Flames do burn a while in this game, which I suppose is realistic, but also very confusing. Um, Thug and Heavy actually, actually clipped it. Actually clipped that shit. So thank you. If you go on my Twitch channel, which is twitch.tv slash techoselchu, and look in the clip section, you'll probably see Thug and Heavy's wonderful clip of that terrible retreat. So thank you. Ice Gorilla says, from the wiki, it is sometimes nicknamed Dashka, familiar form of female named Daria. I didn't know Daria was a Russian name. In Russian-speaking countries, 
from the abbreviation. Daria Morgendorfer, HMG, says what doth life. Yes, that's the first thing that came to mind when I heard Daria. Shout out to people who watched that television show. Good TV. Anybody floating? No. Actually, uh, yes, the Russians floating a lot of fuel, but presumably just uh, saving on for the Sherman, so that makes a lot of sense. So that's good. No crazy fucking floaters uh, going over. Oh, no. Oh, what a mortar hit. What a mortar hit. This guy's like, uh, I've seen shit, man. I've seen shit. I'm just going to set up right here and uh, die. One of our machine guns has been silenced. That's my plan. Oh, well, so instead of going to the uh, Panzer IIs, we went to one of the other eminently spammable vehicles. Not quite a light vehicle, but it's kind of it's kind of on the border between the light and the heavy vehicle. Because look at this gun. This gun is legit smaller than um, most sticks, and also doesn't have a hole in the front. So that's really a design flaw. Uh, but doesn't seem to stop it from firing. These things being eminently spammable. Look how cheap they are. Two hundred manpower, seventy-five fuel. Um, Okay, Soviets hasn't teched, but we should have expected that, because last time we saw the Soviet player play, they didn't tech either. They just uh, they just used their uh, long lease tactics, which is a pretty uh, pretty dope thing. Pretty dope thing. Uh, but I wanted to look at what the scout car, or not the scout car, the Panzer II costs. What's the Panzer II? We can't look at it, because we haven't teched up in tier 3 yet. But um, I guess we can look at what the scout car costs, 210 15 So definitely more expensive than uh, the Stug, so that's not very helpful for us. Um... What Doth Life says, Stug 3E is way cooler than the mod. It uses the SU-76 Barrage as its main gun. Like a, like a Stu-Hu, Stu, S-C-H-T-U, but um, then Lixen said like a Stu. So, yeah. So, anyone remember the Stu from uh, Company Heroes 1? It was basically like this, but it fired like a little like arcing mortar shot sort of thing. That was good for fighting, um... Infantry, so somehow the Soviet managed to make it down to 100 victory points without me really noticing. So the German has, and German is at 500 VPs. Wow, German has, must have been prioritizing VPs, or Soviet not prioritizing VPs, or really a combination of the two. Mmm, oof, hate to see that out of control. Because, uh, wow, the Soviet player really hurting. Now we have some artillery coming in from the Germans trying to keep the Soviets off the center of VPs. So that's some, uh, that's some next level gaming right there. It's not really next level, it's just like normal level. It's like, it's like, it's level gaming. It's pretty level, but uh, the decap goes through anyways because this is just weak ass artillery. Light artillery barrage, I think, should really just be called shitty artillery barrage. That would be a much better name. Um, someone, if one, someone wants to start an email campaign to Relic to rename light artillery barrage as shitty artillery barrage, maybe the, the, maybe the, maybe the balance patch can do that. That seems like a good balance patch thing. So the Shermans have arrived. Uh, I told you the fuel float was for the Shermans, and I have been vindicated because the one Sherman has been called in. Uh, the second Sherman has been called in. I clicked that, and it fucking happened. I am God. I control this video game. And if there's a time for the uh, uh, American, or for, Jesus, it's Shermans, but they're not American. If there's a time for the Russian player to turn this around, it's right now. The German player is really fucked. Like, really doesn't have any AT. The uh, pack has been decrewed. I didn't talk about that, but we were watching it as it happened. The pack has been decrewed. The Stug has been destroyed. Calling in more Stugs is not going to help. We don't even have the CPs for a Tiger. We don't have the fuel for a Tiger. We're 100 away from the Tiger, and it's just going to be Sherman spam from here on out. We're only like 20 fuel away, less than that. 15, 17 fuel, 16 fuel away, 15 fuel away from a Sherman. 19 fuel away, no, 14, 13 fuel away from a Sherman. It's very hard to keep you updated, I'm trying to say, on the amount of fuel that's necessary to get a Sherman. But now it's, it's really curtains, it almost looks like, for the German player. What a way to go. Getting your opponent down to 90 VPs and then just getting your ship pushed in has to hurt. But, um, on the, the, the to, wow, I wouldn't have expected this MG to go here. You really would expect this MG to set up shop in this building, right? So it can shoot the people trying to take the VP back, because it looks like a VP of victory is going to be what it takes for the uh, German player to get this, but um, but no. What Doth Life says, I saw a frontline fatality, RIP, cast the game with Stu, and I was like, damn, I need that. Cool. Oh man, German gets the pack back, so I really would have prioritized killing this pack. I'm surprised the Shermans pieced out and started going off into the boondocks to kill enemy squads. Now that makes sense, uh, like, that's a, that's a great way to win the game, right? Pick off squads on the margins and stuff like that, so that's really important, but I really would like to see the Sturman stick around and kill this pack, because now we have another pack built, and the German is straight back into this thing. 
like for sure for sure straight back into this thing even capping uh two bps soon and there's a cat hello cat hello cat meow you want dinner don't you is it your dinner time no it's not even close fucking cat just wants food um yeah, but really would like to see the uh, Soviet player kill that AT gun. Kind of a bit of an oversight. Uh, maybe not an oversight, just a different tactical decision than it would have made, because instead the Shermans went off to get repaired and to kill some stuff, but yeah. Um, what Doth Life says, M4C is the best medium in the game, tied with Cromwell, in, in my opinion, and it comes with Comscript Repair. 25 viewers, is that a record? No, it's not a record. I think I was up to like 40 or something the other day. Um... I just gotta get some people to auto-host me, pour some more wine. Oh yeah, wine. How did you, wow, what are those people dying from? Was that a German mortar? I think it was the Grenadiers that got the kill right there. That wasn't really synced up with any sort of mortar shell. Uh, that was a mortar shell that didn't kill anybody. How many kills do the mortars have? Six kills and 17 kills, which is not bad considering one of the mortars at least has been decrewed once. Um, pretty good, but the Soviets now have a command and hold on the map, there's a cat right next to me. Hello, cat. Hello, cat. And also a cat behind my monitor, which is worrying, because they can knock out the monitor thing. Um, I was watching a YouTube video earlier today that my friend posted on Facebook. It's like a fucking... Oh, I can't remember the name of the thing. It's a piece of glass that it's formed out of dropping some glass in some water, and it looks like a sort of a teardrop thing. It actually looks like sperm, is what it looks like. Um... But, uh, I don't know, some guy shot it with a bullet, and some stuff happened. It wasn't very impressive. But, um, well, well, they, they, at the, like, halfway through the video, this guy who has 4 million subscribers, so he's clearly, like, hip to the YouTube beat or whatever, was like, do me a favor, fucking go to the subscribe button, unsubscribe from me if you're subscribed, then resubscribe, and then click the little bell button next to me to get notifications, because YouTube has changed how the subscriptions work, and I want you to get notified whenever I post a new video, so to do that, you unsubscribe from me and resubscribe and click the bell. Um, I'm not going to tell my subscribers to do that, because I don't give a shit if you get notified when I post a new video. I could not give less of a fuck. If you're subscribed to me, I'm grateful, uh, but you can find my fucking videos on my channel if you want them. Uh, but if you do want to get notified, then I guess just go down to the subscribe button, unsubscribe, resubscribe, click the bell or some shit like that. I don't know, YouTube change and everything. Um, Prince Rupert's Tears, yes, Iscarella says in chat. Thank you, that's the name. Prince Rupert's Tears is what I'm going to call my sperm from now on. Um, anytime I'm trying to uh, impregnate someone, I'm like, hey baby, you want some Prince Rupert's Tears? Hoosh, dude. Um, what Doth Life says, oh god, I'm so cringe. I thought you oh Jesus, there's, that's too long to read. So, um, I'm just gonna drink some wine. Look at these nice Shermans lined up. Do you think they were lined up? Do you think when you, uh, select them all and right-click to move, they just line up automatically? I think that must be it. There's no way they could be lined up that well. Otherwise. Okay, time to drink some wine. Yum. Tastes like fermented fruit. Um, Prince Rupert's Drops. Okay, I don't know if they're called Prince Rupert's Drops or Prince Rupert's Tears. I suspect it's Prince Rupert's Drops, because nobody would have ever admitted that men cry. Um, that's actually not true. The idea that men don't cry is relatively recent historically. Um, it used to be a very masculine trait to cry, but now it's a feminine trait, and that's how gender works. So, um, good thing I've had wine to explain these things to you. So Soviet player, um, you know, it's uh, it's one of those it's one of those success stories. You get down to 84 VPs when your opponent has 500, but then surprise, surprise, you can call in just infinite Shermans. We have another Sherman coming. Wow, that's a fun off-map thing. You gotta mow down a fucking tree. Oh, I love the hammer and sickle on the front of these things. How have I never noticed that before? Soviets get it from the Americans. They're like, we are rebranding this shit. That was the German accent. Sorry, I gotta fix that. Um, we are rebranding this shit. <laughs> yes, serious rebranding. Capitalism has provided us with the tanks. Communism will provide us with the iconography um, to each according to their ability from each. To each according to their need from each according to their sick ass um, uh, designs. What Doth Life says, Alexander is a boring ab abuser, always has been, hence my reason. No, not a boring abuser. Spamming Shermans is like my favorite thing. It's my second favorite thing after spamming T-34s. This is not abuse, this is just awesome. Um, 
it's abuse if you don't like it, and it's awesome if you like it. And the lesson here is I like it, so it's not abuse. Um, I mean, okay, so spamming armored cars when Opposing Fronts first came out in the original Company Heroes, that was abuse. They were just, it was just terrible. This thing is also crazy. Um, Spamming Shermans. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know if they were overpowered. Do you think they're overpowered? Let's, uh, let's, let's have a poll in chat. If you think the Shermans are overpowered, say they're overpowered. If you don't think they're overpowered, then don't. Also, if you're on YouTube, you can, you can participate. You can uh, post a thing. Do you think these uh, Shermans are overpowered? Do you think this is abuse just to spam these things, or is this just a legitimate tactic from uh, the people lucky enough to own this doctrine, or the people who have paid relic because they're fucking whores? Um. Thuggin heavily says clown cars. Yeah, fucking clown cars. Jesus. Oh, don't even remind me. I gotta drink some wine. Give me a sec. Oh, yeah. Oh, I gotta wipe the memory of the clown cars. That was so bad. In the original Company Heroes Opposing Fronts, for those of you who don't know, the British had this thing. Oh, no, it wasn't in Opposing Fronts. It was later in Tales of Valor. This fucking expand alone thing that was basically they added some. They were trying to copy Dota and Company Heroes. It was just a. This, this was at the point where Relic had clearly lost its mind. Relic lost its minds after the original Company of Heroes when um, a lot of the original people quit and formed um, Smoking Gun Studios, I think it was. They formed some sort of studio. They eventually made ho that Homeworld game, um, that um, the ground-based Homeworld game. Anyways, all the, all the people who know what the fuck they were doing left Relic. And Relic made Tales of Valor that had a thing called a kangaroo carrier, and it was for the British, and the British would build a kangaroo carrier. There's a nice little grenade forcing the Tushka to move straight up and fire point blank into these guys' faces, and just really wipes the floor with them, spins them almost instantly. That was gross. That was gross. Machine guns should not be able to do that, so maybe this is abusing. Another Sherman called in, by the way, so we're up to five. Um, this thing called the fucking kangaroo carrier worked very unlike any other troop transport in the game, in that you could fire out of it. It was just an open top kangaroo thing, but you couldn't damage the people on the inside. The infantry inside were invincible until the kangaroo carrier died. You could fire out of it, including with flamethrowers, on the move. So people would just load up their kangaroo carriers, fucking right click the enemy, chase them down, like massacre them with flamethrowers. We've got a doctrine pick, Tiger Race, let's see what happens. This is exciting. It was just gross. It was just gross. Um. Twitch chat is talking about stuff, but I can't look at Twitch chat right now. I'm watching this really exciting fight between every Sherman in the video game. Some AT guns that are quickly getting killed. Uh, it's actually kind of brutal how badly these pack 40s are getting owned. Uh, just better pencil mounted MGs, it looks like. And uh, the Tiger Ace, which is already basically dead. I uh, really hate to see that. Uh, we've even got a base rush going on simultaneously. I hate to see that. Tiger Ace is dead. Shermans are going to use their pencil mounted MGs and their cannons to massacre the pack 40s and that's gonna be, gonna be gg i'm hiccuping because i drank too much wine um maybe i'll read twitch chat as a post-mortem to this but uh you can pretty much call this for the soviets who have even gotten to the point where their fucking infantry are flaming down tier one you hate to see that i love how the uh the the roof is somehow made out of like double layer of metal a nice layer on top of it disappears and the shitty layer on the bottom and this is just man we're down to four of the original five shermans and they don't give a fuck german player quits okay cool let's uh, look at twitch chat none of them are talking about shermans so there's nothing interesting cool every tank is a kangaroo carrier if you're playing u.s forces says lixon kind of true okay so that was fun um, people in the YouTube comments can argue about whether the Sherman is exploitative or not. I think it's pretty cool, and this is a cool doctrine, and I wish I had it, but I refuse to pay for it, so I'll just have to wait for Relic to drop it for me, which is never going to happen because I don't play this game. So, cool game. Uh, really a Cinderella story. Uh, German player managed to have 500 VPs when the opponent had 99, but you look at the final score, 147 versus 84. Real comeback for the Americans. Uh, that's what happens when you can click the Sherman button a lot and uh, do some cool stuff. So uh, you don't want to say this was just Sherman spam. I think killing the Pack 40 out here originally was a big deal. That really gave the uh, opened up a lot of things for the Soviets to move in and kill some stuff. And then this climactic battle was obviously very important too. But at that point, it was just pretty tough. Five Shermans is a lot. You got to be proactive and start wiping out those Shermans. I think waiting for the Tiger was maybe a mistake. A uh, German player obviously could detect a Panzer IVs or something. Spamming Panzer IVs as a response to Sherman spam. I think it's really not the worst thing in the world, especially if you got some uh, pack 40s out there. So that's my tactical analysis of the video game. This was 28 minutes, 21 seconds worth of playing. Probably about a 30-minute YouTube video. I hope you've all been satisfied.
satisfied. If you want to unsubscribe and resubscribe and click the bell button, I don't give a shit either way, but uh, I love all of you. You're all my friends, except for some of you who really seem like loathsome people, but I guess you watch my videos, so if you enjoy them, that's great. Bye.